This is actually how anti-gravity devices work. We have been struggling with different types of analysis about anti-gravity. We have seen a lot of videos about this mysterious concept where people don't even believe anti-gravity really exists. But finally, I guess something fascinating and different from all the analysis that I've done. I try to bring all of the types of things that I want to see how they act. So this is what I got. You see? This is amazing. I, wanna... I don't even know if I can call it anti-gravity or some sort of the electromagnetic propulsion force. But this effect really got my attention. In the recent videos, I was joking with a little device that I built from my anti-gravity experiments where I was showing you the abilities of the repairing electromagnetic fields that are built. By adjusting the frequencies and, and uh, controlling the applied electrostatic charges, this little device was able to repel anything that I put on the top of it, whether it's a cardboard, aluminum foils, and the plants. In this whole video, I'm going to demonstrate all the energies that I used to build this little device and all the possible ways that may have played a role in the development of this anti-gravity effect that you guys have seen. First of all, there's one important fact that almost everybody takes for granted and I think it really plays a big role when it comes to the proportion procedures. The thing is that almost anything here on earth is affected by the electromagnetic fields. And I've talked about this topic for a long time in my latest videos on the channel. This is something that even Google search admit. I've tried to search different types of materials, whether it's water, woods, animals, plants and papers. I got the same answer. Google said they all can be affected by the electromagnetic fields. But if you are dealing with anti-gravity, this is really obvious that I had to ask if air can be affected too. This is the answer that I got. Air can be affected by the electromagnetic fields as well, but at the lowest level. This means uh, we must find out the possible ways that we can use to increase this effect. And that is exactly what my little prototype does. This is the internal design of my little prototype. From all the reddest analysis I've done on my channel, this is what I've been able to build. People can disagree with me on whatever they want, but this little device's functionality is on a different level. In the beginning of this video, I was talking about how everything is affected by the electromagnetic fields, right? And we already know that in order to, uh, to get an aircraft gravitating, we need to apply the electrostatic charges in the surrounding air festival. And when the charges are already built up, this is actually the right time to turn on the electromagnetic fields, which are resonating at the same frequencies as the applied electrostatic charges. I've said this in my latest videos and I'm going to say it again. You don't have to apply millions of electrostatic faults on your prototype in order to achieve anti-gravity. Because if that was true, then those gravitating beetles will be using thousands of electrostatic faults to move in the air. But instead of that, these beetles use less than 10 electrostatic faults to achieve this so-called anti-gravity effect. This means that even 20 kV of the electrostatic charges can perform anti-gravity at the lowest level. If applied collectric. I remember when I first saw the anti-gravity effect, I was using three aluminum foils, Tesla coil, and a 15 kV flyback driver. What I saw there was totally shocking, to be honest. There was three foils separated. But when I applied the Tesla coil uh, with the electrostatic charges at a time, I myself I witnessed a tall foil rotating on its own. But what did I use in this circuit which is spatial? There's nothing at all. 
I only use the Tesla coil and the 15kV flyback driver. And I still got the effect. When a craft is floating through the air, it uses the well-designed plates, tubes or wires to create the strongest plasma that will be affected by the electromagnetic fields to propel the craft upward, downward or any other desired directions. But unlike these frame machines, I try to build a design which acts differently. In order to increase the ionization process, I ionize the air inside the tube. This design looks 100% like the one we, uh, we already know on the seal effect generator. Because according to the varied information I got uh, about the seal effect generator, it is said that the seg took the ionized air and enveloped it in an intense vacuum, where it will be easily affected by the electromagnetic fields. And that is exactly what my little prototype does. Because if I have the highly ionized air, Inside this little device, I can do whatever I want with it, and I can use it whenever I want. Unlike these frame machines, which uses the surrounding air, which takes long to be ionized. In order to get this little device started, first of all, I supply the electrostatic charges. And a few minutes later, I also turn on the electromagnetic fields, which are resonating with the electrostatic charges supplied. At this point, I even feel the effect in a form of push in my own hands uh, when I put them above this device. But this effect is not really built up to be able to rift up things. And that is why I always wait for a few minutes to get this uh, revy field build up. After those minutes, I turn on the buzzer to release the ultrasonic sound. And this is where we start seeing these unexplainable effects taking place. This is an interesting design idea that I got a few weeks ago, but I'm also planning to build a bigger design to see how many kilograms we can lift uh, in the air by using this device. And I'm pretty sure that the time I will lift kilograms higher than the kilograms of my device, I will also be able to make this little device revitate in the air on its own. And I'm looking forward to this stunning future of integrity technology. Make sure you subscribe to this channel right now and join our scientific group on Facebook for more updates.